Greetings to you all, gamers and strategists, and welcome back to our channel. I've got a question for you to ponder. What is a galactic civilization without the people in it and the top level brass that lead it towards victory? In this episode, we take a look at the citizens and leaders of the Pushan League, a civilization of peaceful, friendly cat like creatures who have a rather passive aggressive neighbor to deal with. So, let's meet the space cats. This is the Pushan League, a race of felinoid aliens led by their glorious leader, Thalora Clawheart, also the governor of their homeworld, Pushara. And these are her loyal citizens, each representing millions of minions eager to please and who live and die at their leader's whim. The sector is vast and filled with danger, and so our space cats are going to have to work hard to build enough infrastructure to support future colonization efforts. Matthew Lee here has a high diligence of seven, so he'll make a good worker, adding a boost to Bashara's manufacturing output. Our cats are fertile and reproduce quickly, so we'll need to colonize new planets immediately. Using telescope takeover, we identify a potential core world at Merlin 3 and immediately send our colony ship off to settle it. Unfortunately, this distant planet is well beyond our current travel range. What can we do? First, we'll build the Colonial Leadership Council to enable recruitment of leaders. Then we'll draft colonists to grab Peshara 3, boosting our range out in that direction a little. Then, we research subspace scanning for a plus two ship range boost. That did help, but we're still out of range of our target. We need more power, Captain. Let's recruit Bruno Muert and assign him as a Minister of Exploration, increasing ship range for each point of diligence. While we're at it, we'll assign Barlow Marley as our Minister of Technology to boost our SIB's research output. That's done it. On the way to settle our first colony at Merlin 3, we meet our first galactic civilization neighbor, the Altarians. Merlin 3 is a long way from Peshara. We're losing more than 50% of the resources transported back home. We'd be better off turning the planet into a core world so we can directly control its development. And to do that, we'll need to assign a leader to act as a governor. Merlin 3 is a desert planet, and we're going to turn it into a manufacturing center. So let's pick Alden War and his high diligence for another manufacturing bonus. Later on, after meeting the Yor 2, our highly cultured Altarian neighbors begin to exert their considerable influence into our territory threatening to culture flip our new colony of Merlin II. Our citizens can't hold on forever, and we cannot match the Altarians culturally. Peaceful though we are, we must prepare for war, strengthening our industry and keeping our neighbours happy until we're ready to strike. The Pershan League made good use of their fertile traits and population boom to supercharge growth, and then colonised several high-class planets with the extra citizens, so we'll need to add some governors to create core worlds out of them. We can also assign diplomats to each neighbouring civilization to keep up relations. Let's add the diplomats first. Bara Millen is an advocate, and so we assign him as a diplomat to the Altarians to potentially help our own culture flip efforts later on. We'll pass on Charlie Jones here, as he'd actually help the Yours industry and doesn't benefit us in any way. Instead, we pick Jackie Chandler, who will increase crime throughout the Yours territory. We'll give Charles Jones the governor job at the Paradise World Cinnabar 3 to take advantage of his high intelligence. But with no more leaders left to recruit, we're going to have to leave the last three planets as colonies for now. But wait! Checking in the governance tech tree, we find leadership recruiting, which adds the invite leader's executive order, allowing us to immediately replenish the pool of recruitable leaders for a small control cost. Now we've got four more leaders, allowing us to choose another couple of colonies to convert to core worlds. We can leave the others as colonies and they'll feed their resources into our cores. Unfortunately, rapid expansion has to be paid for, and rush building colony ships and recruiting all those leaders has cut an epic dent into Flora Clawheart's intergalactic bank account. We need money, and fast, else we'll lose the Merlin system to those sneaky Altarians. In civilization policies, we'll switch out population boom for land exploitation, giving us a large economic boost at the expense of polluting our beautiful planets and reducing our population growth. Note that the effects of the pollution are partly counteracted by the Pershan's natural fertility. And once we're back in the green, financially and ecologically speaking, we can get the cats reproducing properly again. One other way to increase our population growth when pollution is high is to make use of our factions. Each in-game civilization will have a different set of four different factions to assign leaders to, 
and act as a think tank for great minds, with each boosting certain aspects of our empire. Our current situation calls for an increase to growth, so we'll assign a leader to the Natural League to do so, expending a little extra food in the process. We've got plenty of food, and this extra growth will keep our population multiplying while we're exposed to the worst effects of land exploitation. Later, we'll boost support for the Warforged to increase our military manufacturing output. War is coming, and we'll need to take Altair if we're to crush our enemies and save our people. Planetary mobilization lets us train our citizens into soldiers, and planetary invasion unlocks transports to deliver them to their target. As expected, Altarian-backed rebels begin a rebellion on Merlin II, and the Altarians act all surprised when we declare war. But we all know who started this. We've been building fleets, but we need a commander to lead them, and he'll need a ship to command. So we'll research Interstellar Cabinet to get access to The Gaze, a powerful warship that'll boost beam and shield systems across the fleet. We'll recruit Adam Isoda and assign him to The Gaze as its commander. After our transports are built, we load them up with our fiercest battle cats and our fleets, led by Adam Isoda in The Gaze, escort them to Altair to win the war. Our cat's soldiering ability is boosted by the technological advances Stellar Marines, Drone Soldiers and Killbots. Blindsided by our war declaration and unable to muster up much of a defence, the Altarians are defeated in space and our fleet powers right through to Altair itself. Our superior forces overwhelm the Altarians completely. They're no match for our cat marines and their killbot invasion. Altair quickly falls and Merlin too is saved. Citizens and leaders play a crucial role in the everyday running of your civilization, powering your industrial machine and waging war on foreign shores. Manage them well, and they'll take you all the way to victory. As always, thanks for watching, and happy gaming.